What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is another episode of Dave works on this Pro XP. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, today is oil change time. That's right guys, it is time to do the oil change on this thing. Um, I've personally never done it before and I'm pretty sure if you guys are watching this, you haven't either. So uh, stay tuned guys, we're gonna rip, rip apart this uh, Pro XP, rip open this box, see what's inside and what it comes with. I think it comes with a lot of goodies, so um, stay tuned. All right, so we are going to open up this box right here. And in this box, you will see it comes with three quarts of PS4, not the PlayStation. PS4, full synthetic oil. I think it's uh, 50 or 550 is the, is the ratio. So you get uh, three quarts of oil. You get a copper or brass, looks like copper to me. Um, this is the uh, drain plug, uh, I guess, washer. And then we got our oil filter. That's right, guys. In this whole box right here, I think it was just shy of 50 bucks. I think it was 45 bucks or something like that. Uh, you get an oil filter. You get your uh, washer or O-ring, I guess you could say, and three quarts of oil. Not a bad deal. Gives you everything you possibly need to change oil in your Pro XP. Um, I don't know if there's a part number on here or what, but, um, oh yeah, part number is 2881696, 2881696. Um, it just says, oh, that's actually in French or something. Oil change kit, full synthetic, four cycle engine oil, SAE 550. So this is what you get inside your kit. Um, let's go ahead and start ripping this thing apart and uh, take off the bed, spare tire, all that good stuff so we can access the engine, check the oil and um, get going on this okay so before we start ripping into this car and getting this thing prepped and ready to go for an oil change what we're going to do is go over a little bit of uh, or a couple tools that you may need to get this job done i mean obviously you're going to need some rags paper towels shop towel whatever you have just to wipe up some excess dirt and dust around the the fill ports and the drain plug and all that stuff but in order to get that um that drain plug off you're going to need a six millimeter allen socket so i'm pretty sure you might be able to get it with a regular allen key but it might be pretty tough because you have to reach in under there um, and get through um, the skid plate so it's probably gonna live a little bit far unless you have a longer one it might be beneficial to maybe purchase one of these guys so this is a six millimeter allen socket on a three eighths ratchet that just hook up here anyways so besides that, we're going to need a two and a half inch filter wrench. And what this does is actually gets the butt of the filter itself and then you twist it off and do it that way. It's a lot easier because underneath there, that car and there's not a whole lot of space. And so if you can use this, I mean, it was probably five or six bucks from any auto parts store. Um, this is brand new. I never used it. So buy this and then this just hooks up to a regular three eighths ratchet. And then it comes off like that super easy and as always guys a t40 so this is a torx uh, socket this is like your standard go-to for everything on this car so if you haven't already invested in it invest in one of these i mean <laughs> i'm probably gonna buy a couple of these because i can't seem to find it whenever i need it so uh, invest in a t40 it'll help you take off any kind of fascia any kind of body panel or anything like that it'll definitely help you in the end so well, uh, before I get to ripping this car apart, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it up, get the engine warmed up a little bit, maybe for a minute or two. Nothing crazy, nothing long. I don't want it too hot because i got to work on it. So just warm it up a little bit, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and take the bed off. And, uh, yeah. So I let the engine idle for about, I don't know, like two or three minutes. I got it up to about 150 degrees. 
which like I said, I didn't want to get it too hot. I just wanted to get it to basically get that fluid moving and kind of be a little bit warmer so it comes out a lot easier. Um, I mean, some people like to get the engine really hot so they get every last little bit. I mean, they don't really need it. It just, just to get it kind of flowing. And what I do is also let it sit for a couple minutes after doing that. And that just basically allows all the oil from everywhere just to kind of go and settle at the bottom of the pan. So, now we got to let this oil settle a little bit. We're going to go ahead and check the actual oil and um, see what we got to what we're working with and see how much oil is in there, how much we've actually burned and what it actually looks like. All right. So if you guys are, don't already know, um, the actual dipstick of the Pro XP um, is on the right hand side or right behind the passenger seat of the door. So what we're going to do is it is right down in there. So it's right here. All you have to do is literally, sorry, I have a towel right there, but you literally pick up that little latch, pull back on it, and there it is. All right, so one thing I totally spaced on and I didn't even mention is obviously something to, to get, catch your oil. If you have a bucket, if you have uh, a drain plug like, the, or drain pan like this, or even an actual thing, um, that's the best way to do it. And a little trick is literally get a towel, I'm using paper towel because I don't really care. Put that on the bottom of your pan. So that way when the oil drips down, it doesn't hit the plastic and start splashing everywhere. Because it will, it'll come out and it'll just start splashing and it makes a mess. The oil will literally hit this. And when it hits it, it kind of disperses the energy and makes it go all the way around. Super helpful. I've done it for a long time and it really, really helps. So use that right there, boom. You'll thank me later. Oh, actually, that right there is Dan from Hostile. Super stoked getting some window nets. Stay tuned. Well, that was uh, Dan from Hostile. Uh, they make uh, window nets for race cars and, you know, they make uh, suits and all kinds of stuff like that. So I just got a phone call from him. We've been chatting back and forth. So. Super pumped. Um, they should be. Ha they should have my custom set of nets uh, next week. I mean, these these guys are so busy right now. Not just with UTV stuff, off-road stuff, you know, trucks, all that stuff. Um, and um, the Parker 425, I think, or the Parker 250. One of the, one of the Parker races is um, next week. So he's like, uh, I'm I'm cranking them out right now, but we're gonna have them for you. And I literally just uh, put in the order yesterday. So I mean, that's amazing. You know, I'll have it done less than a week. Not saying he's gonna always do that, but um, the, the customer service has been amazing. He's been on top of it, calling me, texting me, letting me know how things are going. And I'm pretty pumped on it. So far, I'm super stoked with Hostile. So thanks, Dan, if you're watching this, I appreciate it very much. And um, sorry to let you know you're on the phone, but uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna um, keep you too long, but uh, I appreciate it. Anyways, back to this oil change, guys. Um, we're gonna go ahead and climb under the car, under the drain plug, and uh, let this baby flow. Woo! Well, you know, that's one thing I always hate, whether it's on a car, motorcycle, side by side, mainly a car, and now this Polaris, is I hate pulling the drain plug. It's like one of the things where sometimes if the drain plug exposed, it's a lot easier. You just kind of just push it off to the side and it just flows perfectly fine. But when you're working with a, um, a skid plate, you know, and you, ha you can't just pull it off to the side, you just gotta come straight, perfectly straight down. It's almost inevitable to kind of get oil everywhere. I'm sure there's probably a better way to do it, but like I said, I'm not professional, and this is my very first time doing it on here. Maybe next time I'll be a lot smarter about it and not have the ratchet under there and just literally just pull it straight off, but I didn't know what to expect, so... Ah! <laughs> anyway, so cleaning up all these tools, and I wanted to kind of go over this and this is your drain plug right here um, and here's that copper what actually here here's that um, copper washer that I was uh, talking to you about right here and that is um, gonna be replaced so 
you don't really need to keep it just kind of inspect it and obviously when you first pull off the drain plug these all should be magnetic so if you make sure you look at it and make sure that there's no pieces of metal or shavings or anything on there um, because it will attach itself to this drain plug it's usually manufactured that way and if it is I mean you have a serious issue but um, this one perfectly clean I mean other than some dirty oil which wasn't even that bad I mean it was burnt a little bit but nothing crazy um, so that's one thing to definitely look out for when you're doing it um, I am pretty pumped that um, everything came out pretty smooth it's draining out right now I'm not gonna film that because nobody really cares to watch drain oil drain so um, once that drains out we're gonna go ahead and inspect all the rest of the stuff um, check out this right here make sure it's all nice and clean put some oil in that's it all right so now that the oil is actually draining out and it looks like it's almost done so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take off that uh, oil filter and like I said 3 8 ratchet this guy right here gonna make your life so much easier because I'm gonna show you guys just where it's at and it's not exactly the easiest place to get to so uh, watch this you probably have a better view of it than I do let's see if I can get you back in there oh man I don't even know if you can see that but it's back in there somewhere let me see if I can put you there hopefully you can see it I don't know but it is right back in there I'm actually have my finger on it right there and then what we're gonna do take our filter wrench put it back in there come on All right, so I'm not sure if I was able to get that on film because it was extremely tight. It was just in a weird spot um, on the engine. There's like tubes and hoses and so much stuff. This is your stock filter. This thing, although the oil didn't seem to be pretty bad, this thing, this thing's pretty dirty. So I'm glad I did it. That was at 400 miles or just shy of 400 miles. And um, I know I said to use this thing right here, but for some reason, it didn't want to grab. Um, I don't know if this was the wrong size. I know you're supposed to use a two and a half inch. Um, and this one was like 64 millimeters. It's, the, it's the, the smallest one that I could find at the auto parts store. I'm sure there's probably multiple, but I didn't feel like searching around for it. Um, this is your stock filter. Well, instead of what I actually use, I had a hard time with the one that I showed you guys with this one. Um, what I ended up using was, so I have this guy right here. It's a pair of pliers that actually is a filter wrench. Um, and if you notice, it's kind of like, it's, it's tilted a little bit. So it has a bit of a curve to it. So it allows you to go into spaces and it worked perfectly because the I guess the engine is right here and there's hoses that come right next to it so it's like you could I could barely get my hand in there as you can see my hand is all I tried using a glove to get some extra grip couldn't take it off with my hand um, and I remembered I had these so I'm lucky I had these if you are trying to do it if you can get this bit in there which I barely had room for to crack it loose do it but if not grab yourself a pair of these this might be beneficial to you um so uh that's a huge tip like i said the first time doing it i didn't know what i was getting into um i was told that you could do it straight with that the guy right there it's just beyond hard to do so uh, recommend doing it with these um all right so now oh also when you're pulling that <sighs> Uh, 
the oil filter off, make sure you keep the oil pan or drip pan in the exact same spot that you or that you left it where you were draining the oil because when I undid the oil filter, there must be some kind of way or travel way for it to go down, but it literally went right down the exact same spot and it drained right back into the pan. Luckily, I haven't put that drain plug back in yet or else I would have moved that and I would have been a little mad because I would have dripped all over the floor and it would have made a big mess and I wouldn't have been happy. So, tip for you guys. Um, all right, let's um, go ahead and clean it all up down there, put the new filter in and then uh, put the drain plug in, be done with it. All right, so before I go ahead and put the new filter in, this is a brand new filter, uh, Polaris part number, right down there. If you can read it, it's 2520799. So if you can read that right there, that's the air, the oil filter. Um, before you put it in there, make sure, I mean, I'm sure you guys probably already know if you're doing this, always you got to lube up your uh, new filter. So what you're going to do, is basically dip your finger in some oil yeah you know you're gonna get some oil on your hand big freaking deal right um, if I can find a spot to put this without spilling dip it in there make sure you get that all lubed up all the way around do not put it in there dry or else you will have a hell of a time trying to get it off that's for sure it'll probably melt or whatever this will be you don't need a whole lot just enough to kind of coat it um, sorry I'm, I'm prone to spilling things so I am uh, putting it back in the box so I don't knock it over but just get it all nice and looped up nothing crazy like I said and then you can go ahead and install it all right so we got that filter back on I didn't even film that because I mean everybody knows how to put off a damn filter. It's hard to film, so I just said screw it. I put the filter back on, and uh, now what we're gonna do is we're going to replace this washer that we got, part number one zero four eight six five. So what I'll do you don't want to reuse the same one I mean you probably can I'm gonna keep it as a spare because you never know when either it cracks leaks or something like that and you just need it at the very last minute so cool keep that one to the side as a spare put your new washer in just like that I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install it All right, so when you get down to your last third quart or third, yeah, third quart, um, you're not gonna put the full one in because it only needs uh, 2.75 quarts. So what I would do honestly is probably put two and a half quarts, um, start with that, check your engine level, start the motor, let it cool down, check your level and add it accordingly. Cause if you don't wanna put too much in there because it's not good. So I'd rather have a little bit less, you can always add some more and it has a, 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 a meter or a nice little window on the side of the the jug here that tells you just about far away. I went about halfway. So once that's done, we're gonna clean this mess up, start this bad boy up, and um, we'll be done. All right, that's gonna do it for me for this video. I appreciate you guys stopping by and uh, checking it out. We have plenty more to come with this Pro XP. I mean, we have suspension, we have window nets cut from Hostile, as you heard from uh, Dan from Hostile earlier. Um, we have uh, racing going on. Tara and I are gonna be doing some racing in the Vora series and some other local series, hopefully DP4 if we can get around to it. Um, and we really do appreciate the support, guys. Um, all you guys have been hitting the like button. That's amazing. I appreciate that. Um, those of you subscribing, even better. I mean, that really has helped me out a lot. Um, 
I mean, I am just a little guy in a big world. <laughs> so <laughs> you guys hit subscribe to my channel, hitting that like button really does help me out. And those of you guys commenting about these shirts, I do have some merch uh, going around. I, I'm working on getting a website taken care of right now. So a website's going on. But if you guys are interested in some t-shirts, I have a few different styles. So uh, let me know. Hit me up on Instagram or Facebook or, or even send me an email. There's, there's an email down below in the description. Um, there's uh, like whatever pricing all that stuff all that stuff's there let me know shoot me an email guys and uh, like as always don't forget to like share subscribe these videos um and like i said so much to come for these these this pro xp right here and i am so excited so so excited all right guys that's gonna do it for me for this video and i hope you guys liked it and uh we'll catch you guys on the next one Woo!